Hi, Michael from CTW here, and today we're going to do a video to show you something that came about because we got a question from a customer. A customer called me today and asked me if he could do something, if he could use the dyno to learn a little more information, something different than just running a velocity test. So we talked it over and I thought about it and I thought it was so unique and, and such a good idea that I was going to show everybody how to do it. And that way everyone, all of our customers get a benefit from this. So the basic concept was, can you test not just seal drag, but can you actually test to see what the breakaway friction of a damper might be? We're all working on low gas pressure. The bicycle industry has been chasing this for years, calling it seat pressure. But in this instance, we're looking at what does the shock do as it breaks away? Because you obviously have a, a friction, a breakaway friction, and then you have friction once it's moving. And the seal drag is friction once it's moving, but what about from a dead stop, from a pause? What does it take to start moving? Is there a fourth spike? What happens? Can you measure it? Can we use the dyno to measure it? And that is what we're going to try to show you. And it's kind of a neat feature. It's a unique feature to the CTW Probe software that lets you get this data and look at it. Um, hopefully you can find it useful. Hopefully there's something in it that you get out of it or you just realize it once again, sometimes it is more than just a shock dyno. So this test is basically, and we're using uh, one of our RD seven and a half models, but the test was the way I saw it, the way I thought it would work, is I took this damper and I basically, obviously, Took the piston off because I just wanted to show easily back to back how to measure this friction. So pistons off. The only friction you have is from the seals in the top nut here, and there's quite a bit of friction there. So now in your own case, you may just want to keep the fluid in there. You might even want to take out the the needle just so you get as much flow as possible so that you can measure just the uh, the seals that you're looking at if you want to switch seals take the valve stack off the piston any number of things so that you can get focus in on exactly what it is you're looking for to discover but in this case i just wanted to keep it simple i wanted to be able to do it quickly so we could get this video go through and show it to you but basically i built a test and i will show you the test next but i built a test where we're going to run the dyno just like this this is our baseline this is obviously no friction at all, no seal drag, no load. And then we're gonna put the shaft in and run it again so we change as, very, as little as possible. In theory, all we're changing is the force that the load cell is gonna see just by pushing on the seals. So the next step, I'm gonna show you the test I created and you'll be able to create this in probe just as easily, so. All right, now we're gonna show you what I did to get the software ready. One of the first things I did, because we are running so slow, is I turned on the sample rate. It's typically at 1,000, maybe even 2,000, which is, for running at the speeds we're talking about, is, is just way too much, too much data. So I changed it to 50, and I hit save so that the change was accepted. Always gotta do that. Then I came into our test builder, and I made a little test. So basically I did a start recording and then I did a timed warm up. And I only did a timed warm up for two seconds at slow speed just so that the damper was moving before we took any of our, what I'm gonna say is our critical data. Then I came to the rod force test. Now this is where I think we're gonna be able to use this to our advantage. So I increased the settle time. The settle time can go up to four seconds, but I made it three and a half just so that we can see as the dyno's holding position, what the force is doing. And I slowed the speed down to a quarter of an inch. And this is the speed it's gonna go from one side to the other during the gas test. You've all seen that. Then I'm actually gonna run a test, although in this case, I don't, I haven't really been looking at this data as much, but at least to just run a test real slow. And that way we stop recording, move to bottom. So that way we have a complete test. I called it seal drag, and that's the test I'm going to run. Then, as you all know, you come to executor, you load your seal drag test, 
And what we're gonna do is I'll show you running it and uh, what we're gonna do in the data and how to look at it. All right, so we're actually gonna run the test, let you see it, and then we'll start looking at the data and show you just how to use the function and features we're talking about. So I've got my test, I've gone ahead and I've zeroed the load cell. Obviously my damper is hanging here. You'll have to come up with your own methodology depending on how you're gonna take the damper apart, what seals you're gonna try, how you're gonna do it. But again, you wanna change as little as possible just so that you can get the measurements you're looking for. So I'm gonna run this test. And you can see it runs that two second warm up. And then it goes and does the gas test and it's gonna settle for three and a half seconds. Something to know, kind of a background. We allow the inverters to stop for up to four seconds. So if you set your settle time up to four seconds, you will basically stop at that point. If you set it for more, eventually the inverter releases and you may have a problem. You may get a bad gas test force reading, but all of the ROARGs around the world and all the CTWs right now are set on four. We could actually get that higher if any customer actually wanted a special feature where that was involved. So, so I did the gas test and that's primarily where I'm gonna get the data from. And then it's running the slow speed test. I'm going to save the data and then we'll show you the next step. All right, so we'll call, call this seal drag A. And I have my test data. And then I'm going to come back over here and put the shaft in, mount it. The only reason I did this this way in this video is so I can kind of prove that I haven't done anything. I haven't added any load to the load cell. It is all the same force. You can zero the load cell. Some, some of you are going to have to take it out. You're going to have to change your actual seals. You're going to have to open the shock up. But try to keep it as the preload, try to keep everything in the same spot because again, it's all about consistency. Everything about dyno testing, any kind of testing is being consistent. So I'm just gonna come back and I'm going to run the same test, except now it's going to have the shaft. We do that two second warm up. I'm just gonna do that gas test. And by doing this pause, we're getting the load cell to stabilize. And then after that, it's going to move. That movement is what I'm hoping this customer is going to get some data from. How much of a force spike is he getting? Now, again, some of it may be from the dyno itself starting to move. But from what I've seen, we're able to measure a very small percentage of uh, load cell change. So I'm hoping that somebody's going to get something out of this. I think, uh, I think either way it could be valuable looking at seal drag and friction because as we, most of us have been around, if you're going to do real seal drag tests, real seal drag work, the idea is to use a linear actuator or an EMMA where you can run a constant velocity. That's the real trick. A constant velocity test, which is a triangle wave, you can't run that on a crank dyno because a crank dyno can only make a sine wave. Sine wave accelerates and deaccelerates to the peak velocity. Triangle wave gets to the velocity and maintains a constant velocity. It's much better to do seal drag friction testing in that manner, but most people can't afford uh, a linear actuator and Emma. So we're trying to show you how to do it with a crank dyno and a CTW probe software. So now we're going to show you the data and look at it and uh, see if there's anything there that you might find useful. All right, so here's our two data files. I'm looking at force first displacement. You can obviously look at force first velocity. You can do it any other way. Um, definitely need to add some smoothing, but for the sake of this demo, I want it to be as pure as possible. And you can actually see this is with no shaft, and this is with the shaft. It actually has the, uh, the shape of a force first velocity plot that we're all used to seeing as well as doesn't the force first displacement. Now you can easily derive your data. You can look at this and see that you have created 
some drag. You have created actual force pushing that shaft in and out. I mean, no doubt about it. But it seemed to me that if we come to each of these, and what you do is you right click and you do create diagnostic. And I'm gonna get rid of the ones I had on there before. So we have the seal drag A was without the shaft and you, get, you can get the actual data or you can get the raw data. I'm just gonna get rid of the raw because we are collecting in raw. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with shaft, create diagnostic and I'll hit the X. And now we have basically the signals versus time. I'm gonna move, do the old trick of the auto hide where you do that so that we can look at a larger screen so we have with and without shaft, and right now we're looking at displacement. So this was that warm up, and then moving to the first position for the gas test, and the reversal, and then move to the second position of the gas test, and then the two cycles where we ran at a half inch per second. Now if we turn on force, we can see the force, the purple being no shaft, we can see the brown being shaft. So that is actual measured force. That is friction by the seals in a shock with no piston, no anything. And that is measurable. You can actually quantify that. So I'm going to do, I'm gonna focus on just on the area where it was stopping and pausing. I'm gonna take the displacement off so we can see a little better. If you ever need to come, you know, the displacement, this is where it pauses right here, basically where they become equal, which should make sense. Um, they become equal and obviously no shaft purple keeps going but when it starts to move you get this jump now the question is is that breakaway friction is that the machine is that the dyno without doing a lot of extensive research I'm not gonna I'm not even gonna begin to tell you which one it is but it is there there is friction there and you can see once it jumps it maintains about, at this case, four pounds in the compression side as it moves to the moves through the uh, from one position of the gas force to the other, and then it goes to the negative over here. So as the seals, that is the uh, that's a that's a great example why we always talk about doing a gas test. We stop at one side and then we move up and then come back down, that is the idea of the seals turning around. Uh, friction going the other way. So you get that positive and then you get the negative. We add them together and sure enough, there's our forces. So I wanted to show you that so that you could see using the shock diagnostics, using a, the gas test with the long pause, you can see if you wanna change seals, you wanna play with different features, Maybe you can get a low gas pressure shock, you can get a better seal, and you can get less buildup and less residual force running through the, uh, the graph. Something to look at. Another thing, you obviously see the, the, this data. If you come back to your test data and you right click again and you go to edit, if you go to constants, you should see some information from what the rod force average was, what the rod force rebound reading was, and what the rod force compression reading were. And this way you can get maybe a, a number to quantify it as well as the visual here. But I would think if you were to change uh, seals and they were maybe worse, you're going to get a good visual of what happened and, and how that's affecting the damper again. We're just really showing you ways to use the dyno to see more data. And this came up and I wanted to share it. So there you go, CTW Automation, Michael, and good luck.